Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to Not Live with Xavier and Jasmine. I'm Xavier. And I'm Jasmine, and we are Not Live. This is episode two of the brand new podcast here on the channel, where Xavier and I discuss all things gaming, YouTube channel, you know, just, just the, the right, the right, the right, you know, stuff that we usually talk about during the stream. We don't condense it for you. Yeah, just some light. Just a little something light. So we're going to start off with our new game roundup. A couple of new games, well, a few new games since the last time we recorded a podcast. Let's start, uh, let's just do them in order that they released. Okay. So we'll start with Near Replicant. Give me your thoughts right off the top um, of your head. It's, the original game came out in like 2010, I think. Really? Yeah. I thought it was more long ago than that. Oh, I think it's 2010. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can feel it. Um, it feels dated? Yeah. The uh, and they and they ramped up the gameplay to match near Automata. Automata. So it was worse than this back when it first came out. Um but the gameplay yeah it is dated. A lot of the game is me running to one city, talking to someone, like just talking to them. And then then say, Yeah, go back to the other city <laughs> and then talk to that person. <laughs> and then that person will say, Okay, now go back to the, the village and then they'll say go to the, the seashore or whatever and then I and that all this traveling is on foot. There's no it's fast all, travel. It's all on foot. No fast travel. They introduce a boat highway through the game, but one part in particular, Jab, and the guy that drives the boat was missing. So they went to the town to look for him. He wasn't there. And then they said, oh yeah, he his brothers, he has a cousin up in the village. So then I went to the village, and they said, um, no, he's not here. <laughs> <And> then, <laughs> then he said, go check uh, the, the postman at the seashore, where I was just at. And then I went back to the seashore, and then I did a lot of that. Now all on foot. All on foot. Mm-hmm. Why would they take the boat down? That's yeah. just cruel. So I didn't like it for that situation. But no. Yeah, outside of the gameplay. Outside. Did and, you enjoy the characters? Uh, uh, the ride journey? Not as much as near Automata. Automata. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can't beat to beat. No. Yeah, it was just weird. Um, because it's getting me the same kind of story beats. I guess mm-hmm. people like so this one, you know, you play like near Automata, you play through it once, you get the the basic story, and then once you go through it your second time, you get new insight. Um, uh-huh. In this case, you get to hear spoiler alert. Um, you get to see that some of the shades you fight, they actually, or uh, they were human once, and they have personalities, and they're actually talking to each other, communicating. Oops. But that's something that we we got from um, near Automata. True. Um, but since that that is a sequel game, so I guess. Near Replicant didn't, you know, copy it. It's not like they're repeating stuff, but since I already could be used to that in Near Automata, it didn't, it didn't hit me as hard for this one. Because in this one, they are just still just ugly, ugly looking monsters <laughs> attacking me. They don't, they don't, I don't know, the sentience, you just, you're like, well, you're not a human. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But then in reality, you're not a human. Yeah, no, so. yeah, so we're copies. We're, we're copies of them, they so they can near come. They're Replicants. Yes, so they can their spirits can come back into our bodies or whatever. But, um, I don't know. And then, and then, and then so I'm on route, like, C right now. Uh-huh. Um, but near Automata, during my second playthrough, you gotta play someone else. But in this one, I'm still playing as the same person. Yeah. Going through the same exact missions with only, like, a couple extra lines of dialogue thrown in there every now and then. And they had you reading books. Oh, they had me reading books. Woo! <laughs> they, had they had you had me, reading They had me out here reading books. One chapter, I think it's like 45 minutes long. It's giving me the background on one of the characters. and um, 45 you know, minutes worth of reading? 45 minutes worth of reading. I tried to look it up on YouTube. Someone like summarized it for me. And someone had the whole thing on YouTube. <laughs> oh. I didn't see. Um, someone had the whole thing on YouTube. And the whole video was 45 minutes. Jeez. And in case I, I saw uh, Charlie playing the game. And he also said those sections were around 40 minutes. I was wondering if like, the YouTube person was slowing it down so we could read it. But right. no, other people who actually were reading, speed reading, said it was also uh, 45 minutes. More than minutes. a half hour of sitting, looking at your video game TV screen, reading text. Yeah, yeah. White text on a black screen. Yeah. It was, it was okay. To, one of the times it was like a text adventure with um in the village. Mm-hmm. We were trying to save some people. Like, so we were saving people. They were trapped in the dreams. And the dreams were expressed via... Uh, text adventure, which is okay, but uh-huh. then, like I said, that later on it was just forty-five minutes of reading, which was just character background. 
What was the text adventure? Like kind of, kind of fiction. Yeah, it was, yeah, no, yeah, all kind of. Okay, so it had its ups and downs. It's an mm-hmm. outdated game. There's just it just doesn't fit in with where we are now with video games, which is too bad mm-hmm. because Near Automata was great. Yeah, mm-hmm. loved Near Automata. Same uh, concept, universe, all that good stuff. Overall, did you like the game? I don't know, cause I'm not done with it yet. I still have to, I have to play it more. Remember, I have to go through all the endings for me to really appreciate it. And I'm only on C out of E, and I just it's, it's tough for me to go through all that again. So it's gonna take me a while. As of right now, no, I I did not like it, okay. uh, or did not love it, not as much as the other one. Right. But I'm gonna hold out until I actually get all the endings, which I'm. Close to doing because I'm really strong. No, oh, the gameplay, with more the gameplay, the the difficulty curve was crazy because hard was way too hard. Not hard, it's just they enemies took too much damage, but normal was way too easy because I'm just flying through it. Mm-hmm. So, so the yeah. enjoyable is somewhere in between. Yeah. So whenever I play it now, I just turn the volume all the way down and listen to stuff on YouTube, and then only turn it up when new content's on the screen. And that's not how I want to play, so that I'm gonna I'm gonna take a break and get back in there later. Okay, well speaking of taking a break, you had Returnal release. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Then. Um, yes. One week apart, I believe. Yeah, one week apart. So I had a week apart to finish these games. Um, didn't succeed with Near, but I did succeed with Returnal. I did beat that last week. So tell me about Returnal. Now Returnal is a Rogue, roguelike. Yes, roguelike. Y- y'all, I just learned this word. Mm-hmm. And I still don't necessarily know what it means because I don't know what rogue is, but mm-hmm. I do know what it means now. Mm-hmm. Um, so, roguelike is a video game where in most roguelikes you start, they're called runs. Mm-hmm. You start a run with nothing. Okay. And then throughout the run, you get more weapons and power ups and whatever. But right. at the end of the run, you usually lose it all. You have to start all over again. Yikes. Um, which makes Returnal different is most games that like this, mm-hmm. their runs are roughly, you know, 30, 40 minutes long. But Returnal's States. are hours long. <laughs> hours hour. long. Like, uh, I'm talking at least three hours if you're actually taking your time and getting some stuff. Mm. And this, so the three-hour run is from the start of the game to the end of the final boss? Yes. Okay. Well, in this case, they had a, there was a halfway point. Right. So there were three sections, and then so one run was going through all three sections, uh-huh. and after you reach that, there was like a, a little halfway point. The next run is going through three more sections. And once you cross that halfway point, then you're you're good. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to. You don't have to do the first three anymore, okay, unless okay. you want to. Ugh. Um, but but yeah, like I said, three to four hours long, and uh, <laughs> there is no save feature. So you're <laughs> being held hostage. <laughs> and you you can't turn the game mm-hmm. off, and you can't play any other game. And if your PlayStation gets an update, yeah, if, you get, if PlayStation gets an update while you're in rest mode or something, the game will turn off automatically. All your progress. Yep. That's terrible. Yeah, I remember you. Uh, that happened to you. You went. You went overnight. Well, not not the update thing, but mm. you were you know mid mid run. And you just had to pause the game and yeah. go to sleep. Yeah, and... yeah. I'd rest, put it in rest mode and <laughs> try it again tomorrow. That was the first. That was my first day. Uh, when I first got it, um, I streamed it on the on the channel. Mm-hmm. We made the first boss on our first try. We mm-hmm. actually got to the halfway point I was telling you about on my first try. Um, Live on that stream? No, no, no. So the, on the stream, oh, I yeah. finished the boss. Then that's when I you went ended to sleep. The stream, yeah. yeah. Then when I got back to it the next day, I was go- able to go all the way to the halfway point boss, and um, nice. I got pretty far into the boss, and it killed me eventually. But that was my first try. I was did not know all the mechanics of the game. I was actually weakening myself throughout the game oh. <laughs> because I was not doing my my function missions because I didn't I didn't know what they were. Even though this is what, this is what I would talk about. It's listed right there on the screen. Yeah, yeah. I was like, I don't care about that. <laughs> I, I, was, like, I, was, I was thinking three melee kills. I didn't, you're like, eh. I didn't I didn't know that there was a downside to me racking them up. I thought I can just keep racking them up with no consequence. <laughs> but no, if I kept doing it, I got. Um, side effects that I did not know about. And yes, y'all, and he did this and made it all the way to the to the halfway point. Yeah, boss. And I got pretty far. Remember, I I got to the I think it was the third part. Yeah. Or no, near the end of the second part. I almost got to the third part. Speak. Okay, so I and I watched that. Mm-hmm. So 
I didn't know anything about this game. It is so cool to look at this game. It's got excellent graphics. It's very outer spacey um, theme. Like, I don't like Aliens, that movie franchise. It kind of reminds me of if they had turned that into a video game. But it's just, you got different colors of light coming at you from every direction, and but they can hurt you, and the monsters mm-hmm. look, they look like monsters. I don't know if they are supposed to be monstrous, but they, they look really cool to look at, and does it tell a good story in there? Um, a little bit of story. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a rough to even understand what's going on. Okay. I'm going to spoil most of it. Okay, spoil most um, so we get drawn to this planet. I forgot the name of the planet. Not Helios. That sounds right. No, I... no, that's the name of my ship. Oh. Um, Atros is one of the sisters of fate in Greek mythology. I don't know those girls. Um, so that's the planet. It draws us to there because of something called the White Shadow Signal. Okay. They went to go investigate. Once we land on there, we quickly die after our first time landing on the ship. Mm-hmm. And every time we die, we, we experience the crash and over and over again. Oh. So she's trying to unravel why she's called there. Watch she's there, I'm seeing other bodies of myself, which means mm-hmm. she's been in this loop for a long time, didn't even notice. Mm. Um, eventually, she's able to break, she's able to get the white shadow, call people to pick her up, take her home. She gets home, she thinks it's over. She lives her life for another few decades, mm-hmm. and she dies of old age, but then she wakes up back on the planet. Because she didn't break the cycle. That then, hurt, so that yeah, hurt. So it's just trying to break the cycle. And they throw in some stuff of her her mother in the past and a lot of stuff like that. Okay. That's nice. A game that is about the gameplay style doesn't need a story. Mm-hmm. So the fact that they gave you just a little teensy bit of story in there, mm-hmm. I like that. Oh yeah. Like uh I think the best role like that have story wise is uh Hades that came out last year. I had no idea Hades had a story. Oh my goodness, yeah, it was good. Real good. I had no idea. I thought it was just well, it was just fighting. <clears throat> Constantly. Mm-hmm. That one, um, you dying was actually good, so you can get more of the story. Oh, because most of the dialogue was only was back at the at Hades chamber, and you get to talk to a lot of people around there. How do you compare which which roguelike do you prefer? It's Hades is still at the top of your list. Oh yeah, Hades would be the my favorite. In um, Returnal, does it come in second? Do you have a second? Uh, second would be Risk of Rain. If I'm just talking about pure replay value, it would be. Uh, pure replay value would be Risk of Rain would be number one. But in terms of story and all that and all that stuff, uh, I would say Hades. Interesting. That's a tough competition there. I I can't ever follow Risk of Rain, but Returnal looked like a lot of fun, and I know Hades must have been a lot of fun because I saw it capture your life for many, many, many weeks. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, good, good. And Returnal, was that a PlayStation 5 exclusive? Or yes. a PlayStation Sony exclusive? Yes, but uh, you're right, PlayStation 5. It's PlayStation 5 exclusive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay, it looked great. It was sharp. Definitely definitely worth it. Hopefully they sell some units. We're not going to get into PlayStation fiasco today. Mm-hmm. All right, so one week after the release of Returnal, so in the week between the release of Returnal and the release of Resident Evil 8, you were able to completely finish Returnal, correct? Yes. Yes. I don't know why everybody out here complaining, talking about it's too hard. Ooh. Not Not too hard. Not too far, Jasmine. I mean, you accidentally got through half of the game, mm-hmm. and I said you never, you didn't get health items. I was, wa- I was watching. You. <laughs> yeah, because because I had a I had a, a parasite in the maternal. You, all, most of the upgrades you get come with like a downside, mm-hmm. and my parasite said I couldn't heal through the means of um through regular means like like picking up the med kits and stuff or whatever the the green stuff is. Mm-hmm. So I've been avoiding them the whole time. But I didn't know if I'm, if I'm at full health, if I pick those up, that increases my max health. Ah. So I was just walking past them without even <laughs> knowing that I could have still benefited from them. Maybe um, you're just too good at the game. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, don't want, I didn't want to brag. <laughs> you didn't want to be the one to say it. Mm-hmm. I see. I see. Okay. So you were able to completely finish it in a week, which is very impressive because Resident Evil 8 release. And that is what you are watching Xavier play on the screen right now if you're watching us on YouTube. And uh, I finished this yes, last night. You, you beat the game? Yeah, I beat the game last night. Jeez. So Resident Evil 8, a lot of the hubbub is comparing it to Resident Evil 7 because Resident Evil 7 was so different from previous Resident Evil games. People loved it. I loved it. It mm. was an awesome game. Yeah, I think it was near perfect. The only thing I didn't like was the ship section. 
at the, the end. The Mia section. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. Cause well, they, not they even just everything. not even just the Mia section. The sh- I didn't like the ship in general. Oh, really? Yeah. Even after we got our stuff back? It was more enjoyable once I got my stuff back. I didn't... But yeah, okay. that, whole, that whole section, I was not a fan of. And I'm not the only one. That's usually... Everyone who eats with that. Resident Evil 7 was a survival... Survivor horror genre game released when did it come out 2017 i mean yeah 2017 2017 year it's been it's been some years now and between resident evil 7 and resident evil 8 which was released earlier this week they re-released multiple of the older resident evil classics so high hopes right people came into this with pretty high expectations the first main villain of the game is lady d the first main yes. villain mm-hmm. went lady viral d and her and her uh, daughters they're the first mm-hmm. that went viral so the game had high hopes now this is ps4 and ps5 correct yes okay and is it is it cross platform multiple multi platform yeah multi multi platform okay um went went viral people had high hopes and then it seems that there is the voices i hear kind of have a consensus that this game while having the same main character as Resident Evil 7, and in some ways the same look, is just a totally different game, and that difference is actually a bit of a letdown. Is that how you would feel? Yes. Um, like I said, I thought uh, Resident Evil 7 was near perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, it was really good in terms of exploring. I liked a lot of exploring in the house, like the puzzles. They weren't too hard, but you know. Yeah, you had to, you had had to, to explore figure and figure it out, yeah. Um, and it was a little, a little scary. Not not too scary, but I thought it was um it was a nice 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 balance. Yeah, and it had a great story. Yeah, and the story was and the story was good, actually a good story. Yeah, follow it. Yeah, they had some goofy stuff there with the monsters getting a little a little nasty and a little too big, mm-hmm. but other than mm-hmm. that, it was um still a good story I can follow. Yeah, multiple threads. Mm-hmm. So compare that to the story in this game. Are they at all related? Yes, it directly ties in to. Resident Evil Biohazard to the point that they do a previous D on oh. in the beginning of the game. Make okay. sure you didn't miss anything. Okay. But um, am I allowed to spoil it on here? Yeah, we've had spoilers. So okay. Just let yeah, know yeah. Spoiler. So it connects to this because apparently Ethan actually did die when he was at um the baker's house the first time, and when he got the mold, they put the mold in him, so that his whole body became part of the mold. Oh. Like so he's basically the same as Jack and the rest of the family. Mm. So that's how he was able to keep surviving, getting his hand cut off multiple times and mm. just gluing it back on and stuff like that. Um, but I, I thought it was so disrespectful. Um, I got to that point in the game when Ethan was like in the void and then it was like Evelyn, you know, the mm. villain from the other game. She's like, Ethan. I was like, please don't bring into this, you know? <laughs> right. Then, then, they were, then they were doing flashbacks to Jack carrying him to the house. They're like, oh, please don't, don't disrespect Resident <laughs> Evil 7 like this. Don't bring her into this. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> She's too good for this. Yeah. It was uh, Ethan. They made Ethan terrible in this chapter. You know, Ethan didn't have much of a character in Not Resident a, Evil no, 7 I don't at, all. at all. And that's okay, you know, because we mm-hmm. were in his shoes. First person. Um, but this one, this one, he's he's saying the dumbest stuff all the time. Okay. I think someone died in front of him. He's like, Ugh, why do people keep dying around me? You know? And I'm like, Ew, Ethan, please. Ew. <laughs> please. Um, that don't even make sense. So Mia dies in the beginning. Later on, Ethan finds out that wasn't actually Mia. That was the villain of this game. Hold on. Well, it, Ethan's dead, though. So when you say Mia dies... Ethan's dead, but he's still, like, he's not he's not human anymore. He's just a mole. Oh, okay. Okay, oh, yeah, yeah. So he's he just, yeah, you. Ethan, the human, is dead. He's just been a mole this whole... Mold? Mold this whole time. Right, right, right. Um, okay, okay. So Mia... His wife died in the beginning, but then later on at the end of the game, we find out the villain, Mother Miranda, was kidnapped Mia and was replacing her in Ethan's life. And um, after finding out about this, he never once asked, where's my wife, you know? Oh, he my was just, goodness. He just didn't care. Um, Yikes. Ugh. He's a terrible main character. Lady D, like mm-hmm. you said, only in the beginning. She was the most interesting out of the, the villain family in this game. Okay. And everyone else was let down. Now, tell me about Mother Miranda. Because Lady D seems to answer to Mother Miranda. Yes. But Lady D seems to have a lot of power. Mm -hmm. The the daughter, her vampire daughter. Mm -hmm. Are they vampires? 
Vampire so no, daughters. so they're not actually vampires. Uh, the daughters are actually made of made of a bunch of insects. Okay. I don't. I forgot the, na- the actual type, but the other yeah, insects and they, they all form together into make those human bodies. Oh, okay. Um, but and they live off, you know, eating flesh, human flesh. That's how they keep. They all answer to Lady D. Yeah, they answer to Lady D. So and Lady D got, but Lady D got her power from Mother Miranda. Mm. Um, because Mother Miranda's been trying to make a suitable host for her daughter. She lost a long time ago, like hundreds of years ago. Mm. And she wanted to choose Evelyn, and then you know Evelyn died, so mm-hmm. she's been looking for a new body, which she's going to use um, Ethan's son Rose. Um, and Mother Miranda's not technically a vampire. Uh-huh. She just has really fast regenerative properties, and that's why she's so big, uh-huh. keeps growing. Um, but at the same time. For her to keep her keep that up, she has to eat flesh, you know. Right, right, right. right. Um, <laughs> so which is you, just you the vampire. A vampire. <laughs> the vampire with, with extra steps. <laughs> but, <laughs> yes. Okay. So well, they could have been interesting characters. But yeah, right. the lady was definitely interesting. Um, didn't really care for Mother Miranda that much. That seems to be the universal consensus. Uh, okay, so. A little bit of a step down in terms of characters, in terms of story. Uh, gameplay. They're not comparable? Um, this one has better gameplay in terms of of action. Okay. But I don't want that because I didn't want an action game. You see what I'm playing right now. You see me mm-hmm. running through waves and shooting things. Yes. I'm, granted, this is an action mercenaries mode, but still. Um, I, will, I prefer the slow pace of Resident Evil 7 where I can actually dodge like, yeah. I can try to sneak by 80, if not 90% of the enemies in that game. I forgot game. about that. And because c- you might not have the health or the ammo to fight everybody. Yeah, so that's you, have the, to, you have to make some choices. Yeah, the survival whore. You know, that's 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 where that. Yeah, survival whore is when you try to survive with, with limited ammunition and stuff. Or, yeah. you, or I can sneak past them. Right, right, right. And this one, in this game, uh, I really through. have to. F- even <sighs> if I don't fight them. It's I said a downside because when I kill enemies, they drop items. Ugh. So if I skip all the enemies, I'm missing out on a lot, a lot of money. So they kind of make you yeah. have to fight them, and I don't want to fight them because the gunplay is not. I mean, it's it's good, better than the the last game, uh-huh. but in terms of you know video games as a whole, this is not great gunplay. Would you compare this game to any Resident Evil game outside of the Resident Evil franchise? This the closest one this would be compared to is uh, definitely four. I don't think you've seen any gameplay of four. No, I'm saying like oh. I'm thinking of Doom Eternal, but oh, I, oh, you're talking about oh no, yeah, no, no. To I, anything I, outside of Resident Evil. Oh, okay. Um, you're asking the wrong person because I don't play too many first-person shooters. I, have I to wouldn't. Say you don't. This is I guess you yeah. If you have Doom as a reference, I would say a slow Doom. A slow Doom. Okay. Yeah, I know. Yeah, the the pace is totally different. Right. All right. So we we still we still break Nick in. Okay. Next week. Mass Effect. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Legacy. Now, they're re-releasing, and is it a remastered and a re-release? It's, uh, yeah. Remastered, re-release. Is, are they rewriting? Is there any retconning going no, on? No, no. Okay. Unfortunately, no. Oh, ah, What you talking about? Unfortunately, it's the greatest huh. story ever told. I know, but they, they could change some things now that it's a, it's a new age. That's I think, true. um, one of the people in the first game, Caden, uh-huh. you know, he's so born. At some point in the game, you get to choose who lives and dies. Uh-huh. Uh, between Kate and Ashley. Mm-hmm. And it's always tough because Ashley's like a racist towards aliens. And she's unlikable in the beginning. Yeah. And then Kate, <laughs> but Kate is just so boring. <laughs> oh, no, Xavier. <laughs> so oh, I, thought, I, thought they no. could, I was thinking they could have gone back and tried to, you know, make those two a little more interesting. I think you can date Kate as a male in the third game. Mm-hmm. It turns out he's bisexual, but you can't do that. You can't date him as a male in the first game. Mm-hmm. So they could have added that. Opportunity oh, yeah. back. back, right? Mm-hmm. Back. Okay, yeah, I see the missed opportunity. Um, and I, everyone, of course, is talking about they could have remade the ending, which a lot of people didn't like. Of three? Yes. Oh, you heard this? Uh, is it the the suicide mission? No, no, that's that's, that's number two. Um, What's how does three end? Three ends with basically every after the whole series, all your choices come down to you just picking between three different um colors of of different ways to kill the reapers. Oh. <laughs> um, hmm. and a lot of people didn't like that. And then they they patched it later on and just added like a slideshow showing the results of your uh, final decision. Because in the beginning there was 
That was he that just was killed it. the Reaper. Yeah, the that end. was it. So after they added that the slash at the end, I was okay with that because despite there being three three actually four four options, there's I mean, always been one option, and the one option was the red one, which was the kill the Reapers. Right? Well, what are the other two? Options? There's, there's another other option you can combine with the the <laughs> Reaper host thing and make all organisms and synthetics like one. one. So like yeah, so everyone has synthetic stuff going on. Right. That's that's the Reaper's whole thing. Mm-hmm. The reason they come to the galaxy every fifty thousand years and kill all organic life is because mm-hmm. they believe organics and synthetics cannot live coexist. together. Yes, they like, they cannot coexist, so they just take them out and then let everyone start over again. So yeah, so okay, so that's just a workaround yeah. to so just kill. That. You should just kill the Reapers. Yeah, yeah. There's another <laughs> one where you can control them, mm-hmm. um, which is, I guess that's a possibility. That's what the the villain human group Cerberus was trying to do the whole game. Mm-hmm. You try to control them. Uh, what is the fourth one? I forgot the fourth one. It doesn't matter because yeah, obviously because the obviously correct the answer, correct answer is the kill. The kill is the destroy them. Massively genocidal, xenophobic, powerful group. Of, I, I see now. Yes, yeah, I see. and if you destroy them, that's the only ending in the game where you get post credit scenes of uh, Shepard uh, still breathing at the end. Like oh. He, because other than that, he'll he'll die, or oh. she. Oh. Um. So okay. that tells you what the what they thought that the ending was, right? The yes. True ending. Yes, it does. Mm, okay. Well, other than that, it's a great story I'm told. Oh yeah. Like I, I didn't think they need to be right the ending. I was okay with it. I mean, it's not the greatest, but it's you know it's up there. All right, we're gonna move into the next section. We talk about uh what's going on on the channel. So recent games. Right now we are tr- we're trying to play <laughs> Grim Fandango and mm-hmm. Night in the Woods. Had some. Interruptions, holidays, people getting sick, stuff like that. But um, let's talk about actually. Let's talk about Night in the Woods first. Okay. Both of these kind of have their own sub conversation. So we're gonna start with Night in the Woods. It was a game that was not on my radar at all until I was just looking for games that I thought would be interesting. Uh, a crowdsourced game, just two D animated, colorful kind of cutout shapes. Where where a cat, like a humanoid cat type of thing. Uh, interesting game so far. I think we're just getting started in terms of oh, really? what the story is about. Oh, okay. She, I know she she's about to have like a dream in the woods, and that's where the whole night in the because this is the first day that we've played a night in the woods. No, okay. the rest of the game so it's still daytime. still building up. Yeah. Um, but it's not obviously it's not that long, so I don't know why they put in a whole epilogue. But we're playing Night in the Woods, which was a game originally released in 2017, critically well well uh. Well received critically, although not so much commercially. Uh, I'm enjoying it. So if you want to get caught up on our Night in the Woods streams, I think we're only two streams in. Yeah. I think we did the first two. We'll be back on with number three a little bit later in the week. Chapman's doing all the voice acting. Oh, I'm doing all the voice acting. Yeah, the game doesn't have voice acting, which I didn't know when I became interested in it. So then it was kind of too late to turn back. But I am doing all the voice acting. Uh, is it impressive? No, it is not. I can only do uh, <laughs> I can only one do accent, Eastern European, <laughs> mm-hmm. and basically Tex Texas. Oh yeah, te- yeah, yeah. Texas two, two accents, two accents. I can do two, and then I can do you know I can do high pitch and low pitch, and I can do it fast or slow. But I I I've tried mm-hmm. I've tried working in other mm-hmm. accents, and I like I, I like I your I like your Greg, your Greg voice. Oh my my Greg. <laughs> 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 because Greg is always yelling and excited, and uh, but that uh, that is just Texas. Just, oh, that's just Texas. It's <laughs> just Texas, but I just yell all the way through. It. <laughs> so you know, but uh, yeah, we're gonna play that, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about crowdsource games later because I recently put up my review of Jenny McClue. No, oh, yes, that went up on Friday, last Friday. Yeah, it'll, it'll be Friday by the time this goes up. That went up on Friday, so we're going to get into that. But before we do, we're going to talk about Grim Fandango. Let's oh. just talk about the game first. Okay. So Xavier played Grim Fandango years and years and years ago. He didn't actually finish the game, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, everyone who's a gamer or in the gaming sphere knows Grim Fandango is uh, universally loved, critically acclaimed, probably set the tone for future adventure games. Uh, in 1998. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know. Released. I didn't know it came out that late. Oh, I mean, old. not that late, that early. It's almost as old as I am. And um, so we're playing it now. We have streamed three 
and we're going to stream number four tonight, but it'll be live when we do it tonight. So again, if you want to check that out, you can just click in the description of this video on YouTube and you can watch it. Um, but Grim Fandango was made by Tim Schafer, legend, mm -hmm. who worked on some other legendary product projects and LucasArts, who again, worked on some other legendary projects. And what I want to know is, particularly for Grim Fandango and The Secret of Monkey Island, we'll, we'll just keep it at Secret of Monkey Island 1. Neither of those games were commercially successful in their time, but both of those games are universally critically acclaimed today. <laughs> Bless you. Thank you. So, um... Without giving you any chance to the research, research. <laughs> <laughs> um, why? Why do you think that is? Uh, now that I know it came out in 1998, I think that we that should we were just uh, fading away from point and click adventure games because mm. that's around the same. That's two years after um, Mario 64 came out when they used to introduce that that 3D. You know, mm. it was it was a new age. You know, they did try to redo the whole point and click in Grim Fandango with this kind of uh, pseudo point without yeah, a cursor yeah. is the character points the the player doesn't point with a cursor. Okay, yeah, it's just. But at this, it was it was behind the times, but at the same time, it was ahead of its time. Mm -hmm. It worked that that noir that there's a very specific style of humor that whoever writes it, Tim Schafer, whoever's responsible. Uh, has where it's just funny, you know. It's not like bust the gut funny, but you like these. This is some funny <laughs> like, lines. Yeah, yeah. They got jokes. They got jokes. They got jokes. Um, I'll come back if I do any research, but I'm gonna speed through these next few topics because we are running out of time. Gaming world news: new Apex Legends game. Oh, mode. are we okay. excited? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been playing Apex Arena, is what it's called. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of putting a dent in my, you know, my schedule. Well, mm -hmm. not too much, because I stopped to play Resident Evil. AC's been mad. <laughs> um, but yes, it is good. The I think Apex Legends has the gut, the best um, gunplay mm -hmm. of any multiplayer shooter I've ever played. Really? Um, but the only problem is that it's a battle royale. But like the main thing is a battle royale. So that means mm -hmm. you can go twenty minutes without fighting a single person. And when you finally get in a fight, you could die to a third party instantly. Oof. And then you like, the last 20 minutes of my life have been worth <laughs> Of my life. With, yeah, with no action, no gameplay. <laughs> but now they added this new game called Arenas, which is just a one team versus another 3v3. So you get right into the action immediately. Um, They're so, honing, honing the, the gameplay styles. Really yeah, yeah, like yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So now I can just hop in play a quick five minute match and hop out and have like three or like I can have like nine or five fights during that time right. compared to one game of Battle Royale where I might might get one or two. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. I like that. They're getting getting smart. Mm. Okay, so you say Apex is the best. Oh yeah. Now are you are you gonna try this leaderboard thing? I know you wouldn't you were supposed <laughs> to help your Um friend. Yeah last season I was supposed to help AC and I failed him. You did. Um, as of right now, there's no ranked mode in. Should we be the in the arena? yeah arenas? Damn. But I will. Yeah, they're gonna come out eventually, and I'll I'll help them out. But okay. we'll see. We'll see what my game schedule looks like. My Mass Effect comes out next week, Jeff. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> comes out next week. I mean, when he hears how little regard you held for us in the Evil Eight, and you still I still blew finish him it. Off. Finish. <laughs> yeah, at 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 eventually. At eventually. Okay. All right, we are running out of time, so I'm gonna just say one of our conversational topics. Uh, speedrun culture. Now, in the last episode, y'all, we talked about It Takes Two. After we recorded that episode, we saw some speedruns for It Takes Two. Some of the most impressive gameplay I've ever seen in my mm -hmm. life. First of all, I don't even, I didn't even realize the game was designed. Like, they were jumping over branches that were overhead. I don't yeah, know that, why they had that, physical... Yeah, yeah, like, you're thinking why the, the developers even make that a physical object? That's exactly <laughs> what I'm thinking. And the speedrun people figured it out. It was it was it was all types of crazy stuff. So speedrun culture. I know you enjoy watching speedruns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you have any favorites? What what about speedrunning just stands out to you? Um, I like my my favorite are the ones that are actually glitchless, where they're playing the game without using glitch mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. and then just you know they're, they're just, just that good. That good. 
I know a lot of people don't like that. They think that's the pizza purpose. Um, maybe mm-hmm. not a lot of people, but I remember. There's a, yeah, there's a section. Yeah, there's a section that don't don't really like that compared to actually going through with the glitches. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that, that's why I like it to see someone you know perfect the game, play SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom for twenty years, right, and be the best of the best and know how to get all through it. I, I find that fun. You gotta think how many times they played it. Yeah, you gotta yeah. play the thing twenty years straight, and then if you mess up, you get all the way. You know, you get seventy five percent of the way through, mm. and you slip, and it's all over. And then yeah, you're like, ah, it's not gonna be my PB. You should restart. That's you should restart. That's start the whole game all over. Everything again. becomes a roguelike. Yeah, yeah, that, that brings roguelike to a whole new level. Yeah. Yes, absolutely yeah. does. That was the most. Those speed runs were like they were pretty awesome. We used to watch a channel. What was the name of that channel? Was yeah, like, that was a, the biggest one. Uh, games done quick. Games done quick. Mm-hmm. Games done quick. Do they still run speedruns? Yeah. Do they do it all day they long? Even, they even have a Twitch now. Well, they just have people yes. doing it. Games done quick. A great source of entertainment. I feel like that would be something that you could watch at work or listen to. Eh, nah. Not translate from the same. Yeah, not not for that one. Yeah, I, need, I need to see the moves so I can be impressed. Right. You got to be impressed. That's part of it. All right, and then the last topic was roguelike games, but we pretty much already covered all of that. Mm-hmm. All right, everybody, that is that's the time. We hope that you enjoyed our conversation today, and we'll see you back here in a few weeks. If anything crazy happens, you can expect us to talk about it here on Not Live with Xavier and Jasmine. Thanks for coming. Mm-hmm. Bye. Bye bye.